대구문화예술회관의 적극적 협조로 진행되었습니다. 도움을 주신 대구문화예술회관 최영호 관장님과 관계자 분들께 감사 인사를 드립니다. 먼저 대구미술관 이진명 하계영 실장님의 대회사로 심포지엄을 시작하도록 하겠습니다. 아, 아, 일요일 날 어, 와주셔서 감사드리고요. 어, 금요일 날 우리가 이제 대구 어, 사진 뵙 날을 개막했습니다. 그래서 전 세계 각국의 어, 사진 예술이 어떻게 돌아가고 있는지 조망할 수 있는 소중한 기회였고요. 어, 이제 국내의 훌륭한 작가뿐만 아니라 어, 전 세계의 수준 높은 전시를 보여준 아주 굉장히 아름다운 행사였습니다. 이제 또 오래 진행이 되는데 그 안에 우리가 중간에 이제 이틀 후에 어, 지금 아시아, 그 다음에 유럽에서 사진의 어, 상황들이 어떻게 돌아갈 수 있는, 돌아가는지 주망하는 자리가 될것 같습니다. 먼저 이제 아시아는 이제 한중일이 모였고요. 이제 유럽은 이제 독일 중심으로 이제 펼쳐질 것입니다. 오늘 심포지엄이. 어, 한국과 일본에서는, 어, 역사적인, 어, 사진의 역사, 각국의 사진의 역사를 중심으로 조망을 할 것이고, 중국도 마찬가지입니다. 그리고 유럽은 조금 더, 어, 사진 각국의 철학이 무엇인지, 현재 이슈가 무엇인지 좀 더, 어, 최근 상황에 초점이 맞춰져 있습니다. 그래서 사진에 관심이 있고, 어, 미술 전체, 현대 미술에 대해서 관심 많이 있으신 모든 분께 유익한 어, 자리가 될것 같습니다. 먼저 우리, 음, 처, 처음으로 이제 키무라 에리코 씨를 어, 소개 드리고자 합니다. 키무라 에리코 씨는요, 지금 요코하마 미술관에 이제, 어, 어, 연구원으로 일하시고 계시고, 폭넓은 활동을 펼쳐주셨습니다. 그리고 사진, 일본 사진뿐만 아니라 전 세계 사진 예술에 대한 어떤 폭넓은 지식과 어떤 음, 연구를 바탕으로 전시도 하고 출판도 하시고 글도 쓰십니다. 먼저 이제 그런 김우라 입고상을 어, 앞자리 연장에 소개를 해드리겠습니다. 
most biggest international port city in Japan and also for the Tokyo city because the Tokyo has, didn't have the international port until 1960s because it's in the inner sea area and the Yokohama is the only port facing to the Pacific Ocean so it means the international port was uh, artificially established in the modern age in mid-19th century and at that time Yokohama was like this. So it was a really small fisherman's town, and the, so the port was artificially made by the modern government of Japan. And also the Japan government uh, made the gated city in Yokohama to uh, put the foreign people into that city, not to go outside uh, freely to the other area of Japan. So the Yokohama had uh, many, many foreigners' town, like the first Chinatown in Japan, or the, also the Korean town, and the British town, and French town, or German town, and now it's more like becoming an international city. But uh, Yokohama suffered many uh, destroyment after uh, in the uh, 20th century. The first one was in 1923. It was a great Kanto earthquake also attacked Yokohama, and the town was totally, almost totally destroyed. But it rapidly recovered in a few years later, but again it was destroyed in 1945 because of the bombing attack of uh, U.S. Army. And then the city itself was occupied by U.S. Army, and until now, there are many uh, U.S. bases still exist in Yokohama. But uh, the place slowly recovered to the Yokohama city, and now most of the part is already recovered to Japan. But uh, as you might know, in Okinawa, in the South Berry South Island, uh, many of the places are still occupied by the U.S. Army. And this is also the things what uh, the contemporary photographers in Japan still uh, making focus on their works. And so our museum uh, established in 1989 and it opened almost 30 years ago. But just before a few years uh, before the opening of the museum, this area uh, used to be a U.S. base. So uh, when you see the Yokohama, you will find many, many new buildings. But it, that's because uh, it was uh, long being occupied. Uh, by the U.S. base. And now uh, our museum has, uh, like, this is an inside view of the Yokohama Museum. It's a bit smaller than Teguark Museum, but uh, still we have uh, seven different galleries in the museum, which has the uh, nice collection for the European avant-garde art and also the Japanese modern art. Uh, like Gutai or uh, many other things, and also including uh, many uh, numbers of the photography collection. And also we have a, uh, one gallery only for the photography, and we're showing um, every, uh, we're showing three exhibition in a year to rotate our photography collection. And this is one of our very popular image of the uh, Japanese early photography. Uh, but actually it was taken by the Italian photographer Antonio Beato. And uh, he, went, he came to Japan and he also uh, traveled with the uh, Japanese missionaries, uh, mission to Europe. And then uh, during their travel, uh, they stopped over uh, Egypt and climbed up the Sphinx with the sunrise. And, and now uh, I want to introduce my most recent activity, uh, which I just closed a few days ago in Japan at the Art Maebashi, which is the public museum in north side of Tokyo. And it was the exhibition of the survey 
his historical survey of the Japanese modern photography. And that was this one, the Showa Portrait. The title of the exhibition was Showa Portrait, Tracing the People and History of the Showa Era Through Photography. And I showed over 335 pieces of photography of Showa era. Uh, Showa is the name of the period of which refers, uh, refers to the reign of the Showa emperor in Japan. And it started in 1926 and it ended in 1989. So it's almost, uh, um, it's about 62 years and it's almost about the total history of the 20th century photography uh, before the war and end of the bubble economy. And so the show starts in the 1930s when the picturesque photography has been uh, gone and the new photography movement was started. And this is a collage print of the uh, Shibuya Ryukichi, the Japanese photographer in the 1930s, uh, which, is, which shot the Ginza, uh, where it's a fashionable, a newly fashionable area of Tokyo. And the show also includes this kind of the uh, modern photographer, right? Like Moro Kakoshi. He shot the old part of Tokyo and the new part of Tokyo at the same time. And those, those two pictures are both shot in 1930s. And then the Japanese photography moved, shifted into more like a constructivistic photography, and which was mostly influenced by the German photography. Uh, because uh, many of the modern photographers went to Europe, especially to the Germany, to study, uh, study the photography. And at that moment, German photography was uh, good in the constructivistic photography. So uh, the photographer like Hayashi Tadahiko made this kind of photography during the war period of Japan. And also, uh, I want to make, uh, uh, to get light on this type of things. This is a kind of a secret uh, collection of our museum, which is not uh, invented yet. And we have more than maybe 5,000 pieces of the contact print for the Nippon magazine or other uh, propaganda magazine during the uh, war period. And Natori Onosuke was the chief editor of that magazine. And he owned many of the contact prints for the uh, editing process of, that mag of those magazines. The magazines were like this. And it was published in German and English, and it was distributed to all over Europe and America. And this is kind of a really shameful moment of Japan, but uh, we haven't really uh, made a good research about this period. So I think this is uh, one of uh, the things I have to uh, do the more research from now on. And then the war ends, and suddenly the Japanese photographer shifted into the left wing, uh, making the left wing magazines, and such as the, the Asahi Picture News. The many of the graph magazine was published after the war, and the Asahi Picture News was one of the most famous one, and and they just. Uh, they started publishing the news, uh, news magazine uh, just after the war, like in 1945 and 1946. And then the photography uh, changed, shifted into more realistic way. And then the contemporary age starts in 1970s, like the Nakahira Takuma or the Ishiuchi Miyako, uh, made his, this kind of the photography, which we call Are Bure Boke, and also the Daido Moriyama, or many other famous Japanese photographers made uh, 
such photograph with the uh, very rough image. And so now, now I want to shift into the contemporary photography in Japan. And many of the Japanese photographers were really influenced by the uh, photographers in 1970s, like this Miyako Ishiuchi or Takuma Nakahira. And most of them worked for the uh, magazines. And now still the many uh, photographers are likely to show their works with the text. And so many of the photographers make the state artist photographer's statement with the uh, photography. And this is one example, the Tsuchida Hiromi. Uh, he's now in the mid of 70s, so very senior photographer. And he was active since 1970s. And he's been shooting many, many things, but this is kind of his life work. Uh, he's shooting Hiroshima. And these two photographs were shown in a set. And the left hand was uh, the photo in the left. It's shot in 1976. And the other one in the right was shot in 2005. And there is the same person. And he was a victim of the Hiroshima's bomb attack, atomic bomb attack. And at that moment, uh, he, in the person in the photo, was about uh, 10 years old or something. And he wrote a text at that moment when he, what he experienced during the bombing attack and what happened after bombing attack. And the Tsuchida Hiromi found the text about the school kids and then he uh, searched the person who wrote the text and finally he found. And he kept on shooting the person for more than 40 years and asking him what he thinks at that moment and what he thinks now and in interviewing. And he's doing these kind of things, more than 20 people uh, who were in a uh, childhood experience of on being attacked and still alive and someone left and in this photo you will see the person nobody in the photo in 1977 that means she didn't want to be appeared in the photo in 1970s because there was a uh, kind of discrimination to the uh, victims of the Hiroshima at that moment in Japan because some of the young female cannot get married because she was a victim of the bombing attack. So he's uh, still doing this kind of project with his writing and also the interviews with uh, about the victims. And also one another senior photographer, Ishikawa Mao, who lives in Okinawa. Uh, Okinawa is a kind of a very controversial area in Japan in the modern history and still now. And she's shooting all the people of the minority of that area, especially the women who is working for the US base. And these photos were shot in 1974. And she shot the girls working for the bars uh, for the U.S. Uh, armies, especially for the African-American armies. And uh, so she looks into the lower part of the army system and she also uh, have a good uh, relationship with the girls and also the armies and took the ordinary life of those people. And also she wrote a text about it. And her photo recently acquired to the, uh, by the uh, Metropolitan Museum in New York. So she's now getting a world known photographer from Okinawa. And the other one is more much younger, in the younger generation, Tomoda, uh, Yoneda Tomoko, who lives uh, now currently uh, lives in London. Uh, she always shoot the uh, scenery, the landscape, or the scenery, uh, which cannot uh, feel something if we don't read the text. 
uh, if we read the text, the image will shift into the different something. And this is uh, just a classroom. But uh, if you read the text, uh, the classroom one used as a temporary mortuary. And it means after the big earthquake which had happened in 1995 in, uh, near Osaka, her hometown was around there. Uh, so she went back to her hometown and he, she shot the, her hometown. And then a decade after, that's a series of this uh, photography, she revisited the place in 2004 and photo, uh, shot the area which used to be uh, something of the center of the uh, earthquake. So this classroom uh, used as a temporary mortuary is the real fact that happened at this place. She also do the same thing in worldwide. Uh, this was the series also shot in the uh, Taiwan, and this is a, a Japanese-style house, uh, which was former house of General Wan Xu Ming, the chief of staff under uh, Chiang Kai-shek, uh, Shidong Street. So uh, she always uh, look back about the history and find the place uh, something happened and reveal uh, the place into the real uh, current uh, world. And she also uh, made some research on, in Korea as well. And Shiga Rieko, she's also uh, in a very younger generation. She's in the mid 30s. And she lives in Tohoku, uh, which means northeastern area of Japan, uh, which had a great uh, eastern Japan earthquake in. 19 uh, 2011, and at that moment, she her house was destroyed by tsunami, and but she survived. And after that, she made this kind of series, Rasen Kaigan. Rasen Kaigan means spiral uh, seashore, and she shot the local people and or the local landscape, and combined into very ima kind of imaginary images like this. And she also interviewed all the people uh, living in those area, and she made a really huge book, and also made installations like this. And uh, one another. Uh, this is most younger uh, photographer, Ishikawa Ryuichi. He's also from Okinawa, that's very south part of Japan. And he always shot the portraits of the people. And he always looked into the people of minority, sexual minority or the mentally or physically disabled people or some other people who had a difficulty living in a, a contemporary society. And, he, and then he goes to their house or sometimes he uh, keep on shooting the people for more than two or three years and he keep on uh, interviewing them and keep the relationship with them. And so, but mostly his work is the portraits, but some of his series is like this. This is a special series of, uh, which is Guppi. Guppi is a, a name of the old female who lives in an imaginary world. Uh, she suffered by the mental illness, and, but he's keep on interviewing or he keeps on, uh, well, not living, but uh, visiting her many, many times. And he wrote the text on the wall about the relationship of himself and his uh, and her and her families. And her family is also it, it's a very ordinary people, but uh, having difficulty with the communication with their mother or their uh, wives. Uh, so this kind of a narrativeness is kind of a, a big uh, tendency of the Japanese contemporary photography. And so thank you, and this is, uh, I will finish my presentation.
보안 관계 파트 1을 들어보겠습니다. 안녕하세요. Uh, for the opportunity to speak here at this event, and it's a truly great honor for my colleague Franziska Schmidt, who will speak after me and myself, to contribute to this conference on contemporary photography in Asia and Europe. Being most familiar with today's photography uh, scene in Germany, our talks, as part one and two, will focus on current movements and trends in German photography, and we will try to explore and map as much as possible the wide-ranging and highly diverse landscape of photography in Germany these days. We will do so by presenting exemplary recent works of about uh, seven or eight uh, photographers, maybe only six, it depends on uh, how long we are allowed to speak here. Um, and um, of course, uh, this cannot represent the whole of uh, German photography but we believe uh, that these case studies can provide helpful insight into some important fields of contemporary photography practice in Germany and beyond. In the following, I will address works by Jan Strattmann, Stefanie Mooshammer, Adrian Sauer, and possibly, if the time is left, Andreas Rost. All of these photographers make idiosyncratic use of photography as an artistic medium, None of them uh, takes his or her medium for granted. Uh, Strattmann, Mooshammer, Sauer, and Rost eagerly explore the possibilities and question, uh, and question the conventional limitations of photography. In their visual work, they blur the boundaries between fact and fiction, between the analog and the digital, and between artistic autonomy and political engagement, to name but a few of their works transgressive features. I will start with presenting um, work by Jan Strattmann entitled uh, Third Nature, was, which was part um, of an international project initiated by the Italian curators Gian Paolo Arena and Marina Caneve. That's um, oh, what here? oh, this is the old one. Okay, well, um, um, I'll send the wrong thing. I will start, yeah, um, which involves about 25 photographers from Italy, France, the Netherlands, uh, Germany, and Switzerland. The project as a whole is dedicated to the retrospective investigation of the horrific dam disaster that happened in the Italian valley of Vaillant on October 9th, 1963. After flooding the reservoir behind the newly erected dam, a part of the adjoining mountain called uh, Monte Toc soaked up the water of the artificial lake and slid into it. The enormous flood wave that overflowed the dam, which itself stayed intact, wiped out several villages and towns along the river valley beneath and took the lives of over 20,000 people more uh, than 50 years after the catastrophe. Um, the Calamita project initiated various uh, photographic... Um, due to the temporal distance of the actual event, a direct approach to what happened is not... Um, sorry, I, I got lost in my text. Um, I, I have to apologize. Somehow I downloaded... An, this is I, a, an old version of my PowerPoint uh, presentation. Um, and uh, so... Um, that's why I got confused here in my text. So the images and the texts are not in full accordance now, um, uh, but I'll try to make the best out of it. 
due to the temporal, um, so Jan Strattmann's contribution to this uh, multifaceted project focuses on landscape shots. You've seen a few of them um, shot in the, and uh, portraits. I will also show one uh, a little later. And um, he shot these portraits in the town of Vajont, which was built from scratch about 50 kilometers from the dam as a substitute home for the survivors in the following years, inaugurated in 1971. Due to the temporal distance to the actual event, a direct approach to what happened is not possible. For one part, Strattmann chose a highly subjective approach to this subject. A key picture that we've already seen is this one here. Um, uh, of his landscape series was shot from within a car through the front, uh, front of a windshield. In the rear, a rear view mirror, we can see the eyes of the photographer himself, who also seems to look at the silhouette of the mountain range above the dam that is shown in the picture. By separating his own likeness from the camera, Strattmann hints at the fact that he does not act as an impartial operator of the camera, who uses the camera right now, so we don't see him taking the picture, um, but that he acts as, um, or he appears as an actor in his own staging of the scene and thus fictionalizes his view onto the scenery. This is certainly not to be understood as a form of frivolous aesthetic playfulness, but as an honest gesture of modesty and respect towards his subject. He, Strattmann, systematically undercuts photography's naive promise of objectivity and demonstrates this, that his only way to apprehend this un inconceivable event of long duration, so the destruction of all these uh, villages in the valley, is by developing a personal visual language for his own way of looking at it. A core feature of a good bulk of his landscape imagery is formed by backlit silhouettes, um, as we have already seen that, like here and like there, uh, and massive shadows covering large parts of the picture surfaces. Looking at them one after another, it seems as if Strattmann not just visited the place of disaster in order to research its history and record, the, record its remains, but instead, he made himself go to the heart of darkness itself, a somber, metaphorical place from the inside of which he took pictures of beauty and terror alike, evoking notions of the sublime as a category of aesthetic experience that transcends the capacity of human apprehension. Often, Strattmann pictures have an enigmatic quality. The view from within a cave in the prohibited zone below the dam operates um, as an emblematic embodiment of Strattmann's visual exploration of the inconceivable event in the past. His gaze that we see here from within the darkness is looking for orientation but can only find blurry shaped shapes and contours. Due to uh, the effect of a tilted image, however, the cave exit surrounded by total darkness, appears on the right like a crystal hovering in empty space while finally dissolving into darkness on the left. The somber pathos of Strattmann's landscape is counterbalanced on the one hand by a serial presentation um, of the buildings of Vajont, and I'm afraid I won't be able to show them uh, now, um, a city that went directly from drawing board to reality in the years after the flooding. In its schematic grid structure and uh, the dull, repetitive form of its buildings, I'm sorry not to have them uh, here, um, it perfectly embodies the violent uprooting of its inhabitants who were driven out of their historically grown mountain villages by the man-made catastrophe. The other counterweight to Strattmann's rather looming landscape is formed by, um, and I also I have to apologize that I can't see, uh, show them, by um, portraits of the survivors in black and white. Um, and these are people of the younger generation uh, who, like himself, haven't witnessed the disaster personally, but who, unlike himself, have been growing up in the shadow of the catastrophe. To sum up, Strattmann's photographs 
do not offer us any precise knowledge or certainty about the past, but they visually make us aware of how a bygone traumatic event can overshadow and determine the present and reach into the future. So far, Stratmann uh, has presented parts of his work in a number of group exhibitions, um, and here you see an installation shot. Um, but as a whole, the project is still taking shape. He's currently working on publishing a final version of his project as a book. In contrast, the second work, and it is like, um, and this is completely missing. I don't know what happened. So I will have to skip the second project and, sorry, and go straight to the third one and that will keep my time limited. Um, so I will speak about this project. I will skip the announced project by Stefanie Mosama and I'm very sorry about this um, and will speak directly um, about the work of Adrian Sauer. So I presented a work that was engaging and playing with forms of investigative reportage and photojournalism in an experimental fashion. And my next candidate, who is Adrian Sauer, takes a completely different path of testing and blurring the boundaries of photography. Adrian Sauer avoids any hint of journalistic practice or photographic spontaneity in one of his latest works entitled Clavia, um, uh, Rome, uh, 14th of November 2016. So it's a rather uh, a complicated title. His strategy is strictly conceptually and mainly negotiates the parameters of photography with regard to the white cube gallery space. With Clavier, um, to be seen here in an installation shot at the Helga Alvear Gallery in Madrid, in Spain, in 2017. Zawa shows us how a very simple idea can be turned into a very complex aesthetic construct. The equation behind this work seems simple. 88 keys and 88 images. So, in fact, it's the 88 keys of a normal, um, ordinary upright piano that give the photographic series its outer structure. So there are 88 keys on a piano and he took um, 88 pictures of these keys. Um, one key, either black or white, is at the center of each of these pictures. Each of them is taken with a digital camera and then materialized as a C-print on light sensitive uh, photo paper. The distance between the camera and the keyboard has been set so that the keys appear in their actual size in the finished photos. But within the strict vertical composition, um, the lens captures not just one key, but also its surroundings, so that across the series, a number of keys is uh, the number of keys is unexpectedly multiplied. Most of the 88 images encompass 11 or 12 keys, as you can see here in these uh, pictures. Um, individual keys thus appear in different position, 11 or 12 times in the neighboring pictures. The result is that the photo series, that in the photo series, the piano keyboard, about a meter and a half wide, expands into a panorama more than 20 meters long and with almost 1,000 keys, as you can see that here in the installation shot. Consequently, the clear and well-defined layout of the piano, that is usually two meters broad, um, expands into a panorama more than 20 meters long with almost a thousand keys. Uh, oh, I said that. And, the, and the, uh, the layout of the piano keyboard is transformed into a dazzling structure that cannot be overseen and grasped, grasped in one look, so you have to move your head in order to um, get it. So paradoxically, it's precisely the clear conceptual order of Zawa's photographic artistic orchestration that ultimately produces a complete dissolution of the visual and haptic order of the keyboard. From a distance, the series also resembles a barcode, um, so with uh, black and white lines, um, 
cut into 88 sections with its information content evading anti-intuitive reading based on its form, so we can never see what a barcode actually means. Close up, however, the individual pictures are recognizable um, as high precision photographic images with the conditions under which they were created as re readable as the specific objective existence of the keyboard. With a short distance between the lens and the subject, the head-on perspective that the camera position compels is mostly evident between the keys. Towards the edges of the frames, more of their sides and on the white keys, the beveling becomes visible. So in addition, beyond the keys, sections of the black varnished piano uh, itself are visible. It's curved. It, its curves reflecting a distorted version of keys and of the keys and the periphery. This is the point at which the photo series enters into an explicit dialogue uh, with a second exhibit, and I have to slide back in this case, uh, in this room, and this is consisting of two mirrors which were designed by Zawa himself and produced in a special workshop uh, in Berlin. These mirrors are angled folding diptychs um, and made out of polished copper, the wings of which are exactly one meter high and broad. Because the, surface, uh, the surfaces are not completely flat, there is a slight distortion in the reflection of the surroundings. And due to their uh, brownish copper tone, there is no illusion of transparency, so they're not clear mirrors where we just double reality. Um, rather, these mirrors are recognizable as transformative media that modify and alter the view of the exhibition space. As optical devices, they also achieve the same effect that the photo series strives for, a constant shifting and multiplication of both points of view and objects. With that, the mirror adds a performative dimension to the minimalistic mode of Zawa's pictures. With Klavier, this work that we see here, Adrian Zawa is unmistakably, unmistakably plugging in uh, to subjects that have long occupied his attention. Like, for instance, artistic design systems in his uh, great work. Oh, yeah, here we see an uh, individual shot of this thing. Um, and this is a large, five meter broad uh, picture called a 16,770,216 colors um, from 2010. And the interesting thing is that this might appear to you as a gray surface, but if you come up close, you will recognize that it is made out of all the more than 16 million pixels that create the RGB um, color space. And they're like or ordered like in a random fashion, so that if you go away from the distance, they uh, they appear into a gray surface. So, um, and here you see another installation shot of these. In Clavio, and I switch briefly back, sorry, to the installation shot. He continues his thorough investigation of the condi conditions of photographic imagery questioning and blurring the boundary between analog and digital. How is he doing this? The fundamental binary nature of classic ph photographic representation remains inherent in the black and white barcode of the keyboard. So this is a resemblance of like the old way that photography was using form as a black and white binary that is here like um, captured through the piano. Um, and as a control element, the piano not only evokes, and the keyboard not only evokes associations with a computer keyboard, but given the workings of the musical mechanism, it also calls to mind the logic of transmission and touch of traditional photography. Even in digital photography, that's how I would like uh, to conclude, the phantasm of the analog does not relinquish, relinquish its grip. So my third key witness um, of contemporary German photography now will be Andreas Rost, 
which some of you might already know by now because he's part of the Biennale, of this year's Biennale in the, uh, in the uh, section that is called Next Image. I know I've seen three minutes. Um, and uh, the work that is on, play this here, uh, is on display here is called Reunion. Uh, and shows the celebrations of the German reunification taking place in Berlin on the night of the 2nd to the 3rd October of 1990. The work on display here is um, part of a series of exhibitions that uh, Rost is presenting in this year, for which he dug deep into his archive in order to unearth images from the forgotten year 1990. Unlike uh, 1989, uh, with its great demonstration in Leipzig in October and the fall of the Berlin Wall in November, the year 1990 has not produced iconic pictures that have shaped collective memory in a sustainable way. Uh, despite the speed and intensity of social change that was going on in this year um, in Eastern uh, Germany, the events of the year 1990 fall short in terms of forming a compelling, a compelling visual narrative of the reunification process. And in the work that I would uh, like to briefly uh, present here, Andreas Ross, together with the artist El Elke Rosenfeld, the curator Jan Wenzel and the designer Wolfgang Schwerzler, has attempted to contribute persuasive visual and textual material to the social and political labor of remembering 1990. Together they produced, as you can see here, an in situ installation entitled uh, Das Jahr 1990 Freilegen, Unearthing the Year 1990, that was on public display at an uh, uh, important square in Leipzig during this year's F-Stop Photo Festival. With um, its public display, its images taken on the streets of Leipzig, Dresden and Berlin in 1990, and its shared authorship, this work is in sharp contrast, for instance, to the artistic and aesthetic purity of Adrian Sauer's white cube installation that we have just seen. We can see photography here transcending the relatively narrow boundaries of the art gallery or the festival in the confines of, a spa of spaces in, for which you have to pay an entrance fee, and instead Rost and his colleagues decided to put photography in the center of town where anybody can come by and look at it without any financial or social restrictions. And the public display consists of nine billboards which combine Rost's photographs from 1990 with text, slogans, headlines, statements, diagrams from 1990 that were compiled by the artist Elske Rosenfeld and with personal notes by the already deceased photographer Christian Borchardt. The layout for the display with a flexible grid of vertical and horizontal, uh, horizontal black lines was inspired by design systems from the 1920s, namely by Laszlo uh, Moholy-Nagy. And this way, uh, more than 80 images by Andreas Rost interact with even more fields of text, inaugurating an open exchange of associations and meanings. Texts and images often form thematic clusters, but always remain open for new and other ways of connecting them with each other. There is no chronology in the sense of a linear narrative, and thus the installation does not intend to function as a history lesson that aligns events according to a one-dimensional timeline. Instead, the year after the fall of the wall appears in a form of kaleidoscope, that allows for investigations in different directions within time and space. Everybody who drops by can look for changing constellations uh, depending on changing perspectives onto the installation while walking by or approaching it. Photography here embraces the function of an uncompromising witness giving evidence, again, to an event of long duration that has not passed and keeps pressing on the present. Since the pictures have no titles or inscriptions, um, they are not reduced to mere documents of historical events. They do not illustrate facts that could otherwise be described in a historical narrative. Instead, they claim a life of their own and can achieve a more emotional impact based on their formal qualities, so that they can also compete with text fields with dominant and bold lettering. So, I don't know, my, tech, my time is probably over, so then um, I would like to um, stop the show here and 
hand my word or the microphone to my colleague Francisca Schmidt and thank you for your attention. Germany and living in Berlin. I'm an art historian specializing in photography, so I've, I have been working yeah, the past more than 20 years um, in photography in different uh, museum, art museums and also um, in galleries. And yeah, I'm, I'm very, very happy and I feel very honored to be here and um, to give this lecture together with my colleague um, Bertrand Kaszek. Um, I really like to thank um, the um, Dagi Art uh, Museum for the invitation, and and also we have been um, part of the Photo Biennale here in Daegu, and we also like to thank very much for this um, possibility. This is really a great um, opportunity to us to come here. Thank you very much, also for you, the audience, um, that you are here to to listen to us. And thank you very much to my colleague for the uh, in, um, introduction. So I, I will um, continue with um, the part two um, of our lecture, um, The Blurring of Boundaries in Contemporary German Photography. Um, and um, my lecture will sketch um, the connections and relationships of media and social influences on photography showing on three um, selected examples I did of young German photographic artists. Um, I will start with the following topic, which is okay, photography in the context of video art, especially photo film. The medium film and video can be seen as a logical further development of photography attempts to set the rigid picture and motion date back to the end of the 19th century to the Lumiere brothers. Experimenting with movings, Im moving images and thus the beginning of video art was um, ultimately enabled by the development of portable cameras in the 1960s. The art of action and performances art around the 1970s was decisive link between both directions, photography and art. The, the music video, on the other hand, which was established in the 1980s, makes the works of video art appear even more complex and popular. Photofilm, a kind of intermediate form of photo and video is also regarded as an independent form of film art alongside video art. The photo film is composed of several still photos. For instance, Chris Marker, French photographer and uh, documentary filmmaker, has created the term photoroman for that format. He is considered an early representative of this genre and his photo film is saved from stills um, called La Jeté from 1962 is very legendary today. Now I will introduce um, the first artist um, of my list which is um, yeah, Tobias Ciolone. We already see um, four images here. Um, I come to explain a little bit later to you what it is. Um, Tobias Celoni, whose video and film works are to present, presented here, has largely remained true to the technical conditions of photography. Tobias Celoni started first documentary photography, which is really important to know, and after that, then artistic photography in Leipzig. 
Um, his work was also on display um, in Venedig in two th uh, 2015. Siloni has become known above all for his documentary photo series in which he focuses on young people and young adults um, at the margins of the society. So you see a few examples. He's less interested in documenting their living conditions than in portraying their experience and their struggle for self-confidence and identity. Since 2008, he further works with videos, films, and photo animations, in addition to his photo series. Ziloni films are more serious of several photos who simulate movements um, instead of being a really film. Ziloni works with those moving images to understand the connections in the digital age and increasingly complicated world. Like a photo reporter, he takes several pictures in a second and assembles them into a so-called photo animation film. The, um, the cinematic aesthetic of this color photograph, uh, photographs can be better capture the actions and behavior of the people in a film. Siloni often works at night, however, um, cinematic uh, strategies and stage-like situations as in the theater are also important for his work. Um, one really very special thing is that um, he doesn't use sound in his films. Um, his films seem like silent films, um, which we will see a little bit later, um, as if they are come from another time when cinema was still poetical and full of fractures. Um, in Siloni, most recent video animation film, which I will come now, um, um, is Maskirovka. Maskirovka, which was made um, to um, accompany the photo series with the name same, a uh, name uh, same name, which um, he has taken in Ukraine during the Ukraine crisis and war, which has began in uh, 2014. Um, this is um, the first example of this photo series. Um, the photo series consists um, of around 40, uh, 42 photographs taken during a one-month stay in Kiev at um, the turn of the year, year 2017 and um, bears uh, the title Maskirovka, which means Mascarade. And um, the word, um, yeah, to say something about the word uh, Maskirovka, um, this commonly re refers to a Russian tradition of uh, convert warfare and military deception, and it has recently emerged uh, described Russian politics toward Ukraine since the Maidan uprising. Ukraine has never been officially declared, um, but mass special forces, so-called Green Men, have occupied um, Ukrainian territory. Um, on the other hand, mass also play a um, crucial role in protecting the Maidan protesters from tear gas and help to hide their identities from the um, authorities. In Siloni's pictures, the photographed subjects are often wear virtual um, reality classes, not here, as a part of this project. So these are just a few examples um, from the photo series. And now I'm, I'm coming to um, the film um, Maskirovka. Um, I have to go go back, um, I'm trying, I'm trying, <laughs> oh, escape, okay, um, and now, I think, yes, this one, okay, so, it should start by itself, the tourist life on site and reports his um, encounters with the locals, um, 
the mood and atmosphere that um, Yone creates with his night shot is um, counteracted by the stories of the locals who fear um, for their existence and their formament of their ideas of a good life. Um, so you have here his text and if you follow that then um, you got an idea of, um, yeah, like it begins with luxury hotel and um, it ends somehow um, prostitutes, um, yeah, across the way, um, still kids. So in between their, yeah, their really um, words, um, opposite words. Um, in, in this way, Jone uh, shows the social and political problems of that country. So um, now I'm, I'm, yeah, I would like to come to, to my next or last example. Oh, I'm sorry, here is an um, installation view of um, Jonas' um, work, the quiz series. And now I'm coming to, to the last um, um, topic, which is um, I want to yeah, speak a little bit about photographic um, practice as a, tr a strategy of contemporary art. Um, from the 1960s, um, conceptual art established in the US was regarded as the um, decisive um, catalyst of the photograph as art. The use of photography by conceptual artists lead to a fundamental change in modern understanding of images. Media reflections and the questioning of the social construction of reality become important themes. Today, photography is used in many different forms in a wide variety of artistic works. Um, for example, um, the in Cologne living American artist Peter Miller works with all photo materials as uh, film and photo cameras, uh, negatives, chemicals, screens and projectors. So his interest is based in the physical world of photography. Um, however, technology is not just an instrument. Um, Miller rather deals with the production and presentation um, conditions of photography and film. Um, I brought one example with me. Um, this is a Polaroid performance. Um, here he photographed um, individual parts of an um, S670 in a mirror and reassembled them on the wall to an image. My last example um, is Susanne Griemann and um, one project called Plech Blende. Um, Susanne Griemann was born in 1972 and um, she investigates um, the medium of photography in the context of social history and archival practice. Um, her method of incorporating archival material into her work and of examining the technological factors underlying the production of photography originates in the questioning of who the in initiator of a photograph is and what historical condition it is created under. Her approach to photo uh, photography is less concerned with representation than with an interest in photography as a technological tool, tool for the formation of history. Um, in her work, Pechplende, an ongoing project since 2014, um, Susanne Griemann deals with the radiant mineral ukrainit called Plechplende in German and the possibilities of imaging radioactivity as well as the historical and cultural aspects of uranium mining in the former GDR. Highly radioactive and uranium rich Pitch Blende was relentlessly mined in the Ore Mountains of the former German Democratic Republic between 1946 and 1989, um, ultimately facilitating nuclear armaments in the USSR. 
despite the toxicity of the mines and the documented half tweets to the miners who worked there, the landscape of the Orge Mountains is now on their way to being transformed into um, a tranquil mountain vista with few recognizable traces of the still radiating industrial work sites. Um, bringing together an example of archival materials, photo documents, literature and found objects, Page Blender investigates concepts of scale, proxy, proximity and distance of relation to radioactivity and the body. Um, Grievance shows auto radiographs taken from different objects found in that former mining area. Audio radiographs are images that were developed similar to photograms without an aperture by direct contact of, a, of an irradiated object on photographic paper, this is, uh, and this in complete darkness. We um, see the existing radioactivity in the objects or even animals. Um, so for this project, women work together with scientists, uh, scientists um, to produce um, in various forms um, of this um, audiograph. And um, yeah, this cameraless um, exposure results um, in a highly abstract image um, on that is haunted by impressions of the iconic nuclear mushroom cloud and its blinding light. In chapter one, um, this is an installation or exhibition view, um, the next one as well. Um, she also exhibited in Toronto in 2016. Um, in chapter one, um, Huiman contains a series of museum objects, including tools, change, and clothings, which relate the toxic history of uranium mining and its effects to the miner's body. Um, Huiman il illuminates these objects who inverted camera obscura and reflects the temporal visibilities and extended um, exposures process um, of radioactivity. Okay, I'm, I'm over? Okay, so I just show you some, some um, work. So you, you could, had, yeah, could see the reflex after nine days and after one and um, tw um, 12 days. And here she selected plants from, um, from the mountains which are still um, contaminated um, by um, radioactivity and also photographed them and, yeah, and made yeah, installations. Okay, thank you very much for your attention. It's okay, I can show this. Okay, I show this way, it's okay. Yes. Okay. Um, Sorry, it's uh, so for But if it's for maybe, I don't know, I try. But it's, uh, it's yes. not work, so. Well, that show it in this way, you can see the complete uh, picture. Uh, 
Thank you, Remy, to introduce uh, uh, contemporary photography in China. Uh, uh, so uh, normally, if we talk about the contemporary photography in China, uh, historically, uh, it's from the 1979 uh, after the. Uh, Chinese government start to uh, reform the economic system uh, from the plan I mean, economic to market uh, economic uh, from the end of uh, is November of uh, 1978. So it's a it's a very big change after Cultural Revolution. The Cultural Revolution is like uh, some kind of uh, Nazi time or Soviet Union time is really broke the everything culture, the economic. Uh, so at that time we have uh, photography is like a totally propaganda. Uh, but after that, uh, when Chinese government start to uh, change the economic system, uh, the most photographer they come from. Uh, journalists, so they start to do documentary film. They try to show something uh, real, and also they try to use the photography as a, a art uh, form. Uh, but uh, uh, yeah, so the first uh, uh, landmark of the contemporary uh, Chinese photography is uh, the very important exhibition. It's called uh, Nature Society People. It's organized by the first independent uh, photography group. It's called the uh, April Photograph Group. Uh, but uh, it's uh, quite a long history. But um, my focus, uh, my lecture is uh, focus on the digital uh, time after digital technique. How the digital change uh, the photography. So especially focus uh, on last twenty years photography in China. Uh, because uh, to me, contemporary photography is really uh, revolution come from digital, so it's totally changed uh, the traditional uh, photography. Um, yeah, so uh, of course, traditionally uh, the photography is like a mirror uh, for of our reality, of our real world. Uh, so. Even the digital time artists also uh, try to relate to their works with the reality. Uh, but on the other hand, they developed more about digital and the traditional photography way. It's even very ancient the, the technique of uh, photography. Uh, but to, to me, the, the way they show the reality, they have more. Uh, they develop. They develop a little more. It's like uh, how to show the understanding of uh, our reality. It's not uh, only uh, uh, show the real world or like the mirror of our life. Yeah, and uh, uh, the uh, photographer is a uh, photography is a very powerful tool to change the society. So the artists do. Uh, keep their role uh, of it uh, even in the digital time uh, and the, uh, the digital uh, is uh, like uh, the bomb for the uh, me media so uh, it's uh, developed two things one thing is uh, re still related uh, with the traditional chemical and uh, physical way how to uh, produce photography, but uh, it's more like an artwork. It's not uh, a, a documentary film or uh, journalist uh, film, uh, photography. So I will show about 10 artists' uh, works from the last 20 years. First one is uh, Wang Xinzong. Uh, his earliest time, maybe you know quite a lot about him because he has a social in uh, Daegu Art Museum before. Uh, but he is a very important example. Uh, 
because when he used the photography, it's totally from the digital. And uh, uh, these uh, very early works, uh, he used he, the, the image come from very old Chinese ink painting. So it's a little bit a similar relationship uh, uh, because uh, he, in his uh, photo, uh, the figure is uh, uh, Li Xianting, he's a very famous uh, art critic. He was uh, watched by police for many years. And the ancient uh, ink painting also have the similar uh, things because the emperor worried about the mini, uh, minister. So, uh, he, the emperor sent uh, the painter to watch the uh, prime minister and the paint what he did. So the prime minister uh, at the Tang Dynasty just to do some like a play music. This kind of is not political things. So, uh, so uh, Wang Qingzong replied, asked uh, the uh, critic uh, Li Xianting replied as uh, some figure, uh, lesson the music, some. Uh, a female uh, woman dance, something like that, to show the situation uh, uh, now in China. Actually, it's about the reality, but it's in the art way. So, uh, his early works almost always uh, use this way, like uh, this one is uh, also from uh, uh, Tang Dynasty, the uh, um, very ancient ink painting. And uh, uh, the uh, Tibetan ambassador visit the emperor of Tang Dynasty, but uh, Wang Xiuzong changed it. The foreigner, as the emperor, sat on uh, the bed, and, uh, and uh, some Chinese show the Chinese flag as the Tibetan people. So you can see the emperor's body is bigger than the others. Yeah. So. Uh, and also, Wang Jingsun used uh, like uh, McDonald's, uh, Coca Cola. So, so it means it's uh, show how economic change uh, to be global uh, to uh, China. Uh, yeah, it, it, it uh, looks like some uh, propaganda sculpture, monument. Uh, so, Wang Jingsun asked the actors. Uh, to uh, take photos as the monument. It's like past, uh, uh, present, and the future. It's uh, how he's, he's thinking about uh, the country's situation uh, from the uh, development. And uh, uh, Follow Me is a very popular uh, English TV program from 1980s. I heard also in Korea you, have, you also have this thing to China because it's just opened, so it's very popular, every young people learn it. But Wang Jingsun used uh, for me is the, it's to show how the nation, the government promotes the nation uh, to the world. Uh, so it's a nationalism, something related with nationalism. Yeah. Uh, so all his work is related actually with the reality of uh, uh, Chinese development uh, develop uh, situation. And uh, it's like a make movie, he, he used the studio and uh, make everything by himself and shoot it. It's an extreme uh, large scale, uh, a lot of people in it. Uh, even when he moved to uh, New York, New York um, uh, he invited uh, the American to make the new work. It's the same similar way. It's also related with some kind of uh, uh, reality problem. Uh, like the goddess had the Chinese government address. Uh, yeah, it's uh, like the gold uh, Buddha her body her um, The second, uh, so I should. Uh, Maybe check my time. Uh, can you help pass my mobile? Okay. I, so I can control my time. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so uh, the second one is Xu Yong. Actually, Xu Yong started to do photography very early, and uh, his first uh, famous works I didn't select here. 
because it's a documentary film about a beautiful Hutong area. It's black and white, and that's the documentary and art of uh, photography uh, at that time. Uh, but uh, uh, when, when he moved to Sanne Hazong, uh, that's the first international contemporary art uh, district in Beijing. Uh, he's one of the founders of it. He opened a very big space here. So he started to change his uh, way how to make photography. Uh, so uh, after he moved to Sanne Hazong, uh, he did this series. It's, uh, uh, he uh, cooperated with the pers prostitute uh, Yuna because the, uh, the prostitute uh, she didn't like her work she wanted to leave but uh, she has no money she had no money so uh, she asked her to make a uh, photo together uh, so you, you can see the uh, girl take a photo by him herself that's the Oh, the photo from the uh, girls when she studied in the school, that's her. So she made, uh, he made uh, uh, the series with uh, her and uh, also the text to uh, uh, write by the uh, girl Yuna about uh, his uh, uh, life before. Uh, then uh, sell the, the photo, the get money and give half to uh, Yuna, then Yuna can have the new life, something. And his next uh, works also a prostitute, but it's very different. It's a, uh, he, he took a photo in one day. It's uh, more than 500 pieces. Uh, and uh, uh, this uh, prostitute uh, name is Yu. Uh, she uh, had a business for more than 10 uh, months in one day. So uh, she will shoot uh, her uh, portrait from morning to the uh, night so for the whole day. So the uh, whole exhibition, you just see uh, more than 500 pieces of uh, the uh, girl's uh, face, faces. And uh, this works actually uh, Xiong took uh, in 1989. It's the Tiananmen incident. Uh, maybe you know the Chinese government killed the student in Beijing. And, uh, so it, it's a very uh, important democracy movement uh, from the students at that time. It's a little bit like a Kongju incident, something like that. So she kept the uh, negative many years. It, it's impossible to show in China even now. So at last he decided to make an artwork. So just show the uh, negative image, but the print, uh, like, like the C print, uh, bigger. Uh, the audience, they can use their mobile uh, to see the positive image. So, so that's uh, some kind of related with the memory, also the uh, reality. Uh, also how artists uh, use the media uh, related with uh, uh, traditional photography to uh, contemporary. So that's also Xiong's work. So you, you can, uh, I always find uh, from the last 10 years, uh, even one uh, photographer, he always, they always uh, try to so many different things because it really, uh, the digital gave a different idea about the photo image uh, to a lot of different ways. So you, it, you can find a totally different way how they use the photography. Uh, like Xiong's uh, works, uh, 18% gray, uh, it's a, just a, a lost focus image uh, from camera, uh, the digital camera. Uh, but the, 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 yeah, they have a title like Tiananmen Square and uh, you know, some important people to him, but uh, from the image is nothing. So it's related to how he's uh, thinking about the, uh, the reality from uh, his uh, personal life. Is, and it's also related with the uh, photography, how artists use it to show uh, as an artwork. Uh, because uh, uh, the white color on photo is 18% uh, gray, actually. It's not totally white, so that's why he use it. So it's a touch the uh, age of the uh, photography 
uh, the way how to make it. And uh, this is also another series of 18% uh, gray is a portrait. So it's a letter for every uh, and for a lot of friends, but it's a lot, totally lost uh, the portrait in me. And uh, this is uh, also Xiong's works. Uh, it's called Transmission and the Focus. So he, he used the same way to shoot the uh, life, shoot the things, but it's only color. So he printed color on glass uh, as the photo image and showed it like an installation, photo installation in the exhibition. And uh, another work is uh, like the color of the wave lens. Uh, it's the same, but uh, printed on different materials and uh, uh, to show uh, the light because that's a very diff uh, basic thing for photography is the light. And uh, uh, next artist I want to show is Du uh, Zi. Uh, this work, uh, the title is Scar. Uh, the scar is a human being. Uh, we try to uh, change. We, we change the earth, but uh, it's for the industry or for a lot of different kind of reason. So uh, this part is from Google Earth. You can see the huge. Uh, it's a, to to the artist. It, it's like a scar of earth. So it's uh, like this uh, from the uh, miner. Uh, something vaster and uh, put them together, that is uh, quite a huge uh, hill. And uh, the, this from the Copper Manor, yeah, you can see uh, even the building, you know, it, you can see it's very small uh, on the image, so it's huge, actually very huge. The image is also a uh, very huge image. Uh, yeah, and also uh, the government want to build a new uh, town, so they cut the mountain. So you can find from Google Earth, they took the cut the mountain and uh, built the, the whole uh, new town. Uh, later, he did develop uh, one series, is uh, uh, Marine Reclamation Land. So that, that's the uh, coastal line of China, so you can see how many place? Uh, so each image is a place the, uh, the government do the uh, reclamation land in China. So it, the, this uh, so this kind of work is uh, based on the artist's uh, study, uh, research about the reality and find what's the problem and uh, try to show them. And uh, actually, the government they don't want uh, re really. Uh, Tell people about these kind of things. So, are they also shoot a very uh, large uh, image uh, at that position? So you can see the different way how do they make it, a different place. Yeah, and uh, when artists show it uh, with uh, a lot of archived images and also different way uh, to show it. So it's a, a, a totally based on the research use the uh, photography. Yeah, and I want to show this uh, example is uh, from Wang Juliang. Uh, it's uh, because of his uh, works, uh, the Beijing government changed the policy or the law for uh, how to manage uh, the rubbish. Uh, because uh, he he found that around Beijing there are 400 uh, points uh, they they uh, put the uh, rubbish in the land. So it's totally around Beijing like a circle. So it's a it's a really big problem. But before nobody really care or no have the exactly information about that. So he he did the research and uh, make a, a documentary a film and the photography to show it and uh, win some award from the Lanzhou International Photography Festival. Then the Chinese. Uh, from the internet, then the government still start to change uh, how to manage the rubbish. Uh, uh, this uh, the next works from John Wei, the young artist. Uh, 
he, his works always based on digital language is a ten, temporary uh, performers. So it's uh, the portraits, it, it's like a performer, it's not a real themselves uh, by photography. So it's also uh, have a very strange identity with some things. Uh, it's about a uh, uh, children. Yeah, it's so the, this series is uh, based on also uh, classical oil painting from Ho Ben, but uh, uh, the dad is a common Chinese people. Uh, so a lot of different kind of identity. And uh, this works uh, is also from photo. Uh, he shoot a photo from Chinese people and use part of it to make a portrait from the very famous uh, uh, classical oil painting. So it's photo, original from photo, but it's like painting, uh, used photo to be painting. And uh, later he, he developed uh, this series in the uh, same way. You know, it's a Chinese people's portrait, but uh, uh, make a uh, portrait as the famous uh, people, like the leader, political leader in the world. Uh, so it, it, when you uh, say it first, it's very familiar, but later it's always some kind of little bit strange, because maybe the one face is made of uh, Hundreds of photos from non common people, uh, from Chinese. Yeah, it's a, a series about the uh, movie star, uh, superstar. Uh, uh, this John Dali's works. Uh, John Dali's works, uh, uh, this series is nothing shoot by himself. It, he used the uh, 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 historical image. Uh, because of the propaganda, so the image changes. So you will find uh, the original one and the, 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 the published one is different because they uh, lost something because of the political reason. So they take off them. Uh, he he found uh, a lot of from the public media, newspaper, magazine, uh, it's, it, it's, uh, they take something from the original one. Uh, even the common people, this are about Mao, important the politician, but also the normal uh, new, uh, news photos from the magazine or newspapers, they also did these kind of things. Uh, and the next, next uh, series, he tried to find the from international media. Yeah. But actually, I also see the similar uh, works from, uh, especially last year I saw in uh, Germany, is a uh, about the uh, Soviet Union, so they published a book about it. Yeah, I think it's, uh, maybe it's everywhere in the world. So the, uh, but uh, at the same time, Zhang Dali also did this kind of works. It's a uh, uh, use of the standard type uh, photos on print and on the canvas. It's not print, it's a, a shadow uh, on the canvas. So, uh, you can see it's quite a large uh, yeah, piece. Yeah, this is the in the exhibition view. Yeah. So the you, you can find that the artists uh, try so many totally different things for their works. And uh, it's uh, from last twenty years also it's like a wave. Uh, people use the very traditional uh, photographic view, like uh, the pinhole works, but there's a three meter, uh, it's like Chang Chang, did it, uh, he used the building as the uh, dark black box uh, to do the works. And also, uh, like uh, for the, the Shanghai, the landscape with this way. And the artists stay in the dark room uh, as the process. Uh, this works from uh, Gobo. Uh, it's a uh, he took uh, Tibetan uh, photos from 1990s, but later he made it as artworks like the it's human beings' blood drawing on the photo and the paint 
on the black white uh, portrait photo. Uh, the photo original is a Tibetan people. And the ex exhibition, uh, this exhibition, uh, he did in 1915s in Tokyo Gallery in Beijing. And the, the, the uh, stone image, the all image come from Tibetan uh, people. Uh, you know, the Tibetan Buddhism, they put the stone together, so he used the, uh, this kind of as the insertion, and also cross uh, these kind of things. Uh, so uh, the related uh, photography with the object, uh, with the insertion, and uh, the next artist is Chai uh, uh, First, uh, his work is also based on some painting, like from Goya's works, to show some little political issues of Chinese history, uh, and also some like some joke. Uh, uh, the works related to the Kobe's uh, painting and the Duchamp's works. So you can see the light from here. And uh, also, these works uh, from Duchamp's works and the uh, Vermeer's painting, so make uh, related with the uh, old mar masterpieces. Uh, from these works, uh, it's just no more uh, photo should uh, his wife uh, feed children. Uh, it's just uh, his uh, studio. There's nothing related with the masterpieces. Uh, after that, uh, he start to make to change uh, the uh, photo physically, like uh, cut it, uh, like a flash, and cut the roll and roll it, and the, uh, use the object uh, to relate it with the image. So he used the mirror uh, like this, and uh, yeah, the, the arrow on the image. And this is lens on the image. The raw the uh, photos. Sorry. So, yeah. so the hand photo related with the uh, image is also. Yeah. So uh, his way uh, developed more related with the object. Also, the installation. And one in those works, the first uh, is also like the direct photo. It, it, it's like the uh, drama or something, or the, our people close eyes. You know? Because normally the portrait, the people, nobody close eyes, but all his, his close eyes is like a daydream and use a lot of uh, political clothes, something, politicians' clothes. Like this. Uh, later, he, he did uh, these pieces. So the image uh, come from shadow actually, uh, bec because he uh, put the uh, photo like this. The light come through it and uh, make the sh the shadow uh, makes the image. So like this. So this way is no light come from uh, up, but this the shadow come down make the photo. And there is also uh, the shadows uh, from the image. So the artist's way is not the image, image from itself, it's from some way how to use the, the exhibition uh, equipment. And this is another uh, work. It looks like painting, but it's, it's from photo. Because China, in Chinese city, uh, a lot of graffiti, the government covered it, painted it. So he shoot the photo. Uh, the, the painting from the wall and then make uh, some uh, use of Photoshop, make some like a painting, like a uh, expressionism painting or something like this, uh, a portrait. Yeah, so that's the uh, ten artists I select. Uh, it's not uh, it's all of China because so many different things. But men, uh, mainly photography in China is still a documentary film. Uh, but I think, uh, to me, I f uh, focus more on the uh, digital, uh, 
how the digital give an influence to the photography and how it changed the photography. Thank you.